9,286.5 pounds of carrots. That's how many we've grown over the past four years in clay soil. Sounds impossible, right? It's not. In today's video, I'm gonna show you our step-by-step -step process, how we get straight carrots like these every time in our concrete clay soil. I'm Zach Buckle. I own Farm Table West, which is this half acre vegetable farm you see here. And we've grown 9,286.5 pounds of carrots so far. And we have about 1,200 pounds still in the ground ready to be harvested that'll last us through January. And if you're serious about growing carrots or any of your own food for that matter, check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description below where I go over how to set up a really easy, no dig garden in your backyard in four simple steps. So you can grow carrots in clay soil even easier than I do. Now, the first step to growing carrots like that in clay soil is to make sure that it's aerated using a broad fork like this or that digging fork that I used earlier to harvest the carrots. But basically you just have to go and make sure your soil is aerated so the roots have room to grow. And so you can aerate with that broad fork that I just showed you or with this digging fork I just used to harvest the carrots. And all you're doing is sticking it in the ground and lifting it back far enough so that you see a crack in the surface of the soil. That means there's plenty of air for those roots to go down. And we've been broad forking our ground for four years now, which is why our carrots are starting to look just spectacularly perfect. But I still got really good results the first time I did this. And it was much harder to broad fork when I first started. So doing this every year religiously makes it so you can grow perfectly straight carrots in concrete. And the other part of that is you're adding organic amendments every time you broad fork. So slowly you've got organic matter going down into the soil to make it less clay. And I think probably the most important part of the broad forking process is removing the rocks. I think a lot of what causes those spindly weird carrots that grow like this and then this is rocks, not clay. clay. Carrots are pretty tough. They're gonna grow through tough conditions if you give them the right growing medium and the top one inch and you have enough water and the drainage is working for them. The clay soil is not really what's gonna stop them. It's rocks and all the other problems that come with growing carrots. But removing rocks, whenever you feel them, when you're broad forking, just stop, grab a shovel, grab that rock, because you only gotta grab it once and then it never comes back. That's the nice thing about rocks. They're a lot easier than weeds. They don't grow back. The second step is putting in really nice organic matter every time you do that broad forking. And for those of you that are interested, I'll leave a link to a broad fork that I used when I first started in the description below if you do want to buy one. The digging fork, you could just buy at Ace Hardware, buy a digging fork, it'll work just as fine. But every time we broad fork, we put in organic matter of some kind. So right now what we're doing in the fall is putting on an inch of compost and sand actually. Sand is something I'm adding to the soil here slowly because I want it to be more sandy because for us, the clay causes a lot of problems with the planting tools that we have and hand transplanting because this is not very fun to plant in. You know, it hurts your fingers to push deep in there. So slowly but surely the sand is gonna break that clay up and make it a little easier to get planting in here but honestly it doesn't really affect our production at all it just makes it more of a pain to uh to grow stuff but and carrots are actually not one of the harder things for us to grow in the clay there's other things that are a lot harder but now that we've got the clay the uh technique i'm talking about figured out with carrots um it's really about what i'm about to talk about so adding in compost or something like alfalfa meal or soybean meal um slowly but surely will help because if you get the top inch of soil really really nice like this nice and tilthy 
um, it makes it easier for the carrot seeds to have seed to soil contact. And so what we do is we use a tool called a tilter. I'm not gonna demonstrate that because that's pretty expensive. It's not something you're gonna wanna use for your garden. But what I used to use before I had the tilter was a rake just like this. And I would just go and do one of these movements to kind of work it in that first inch and then slowly rake it really, really flat. And the flatness is the key to this because that's what's gonna get you your really good germination. If your soil surface is all bumpy and you're seeding into it, much more likely to have uneven germination. And that's the number one thing that controls your yield of carrots is germination for the most part. So we are real meticulous about raking things really flat with planting and it works because you can see we're just swimming in carrots right now. And this actually is not perfect germination, but luckily with storage carrots, we grow them real big and we're selling them by the pound, so it's kind of okay. But now we've got this really nice flat surface to use our next for our next step. But having a flat surface means the soil is really even and not gonna have a lot of air pockets in it. That's the key detail, because if you have a lot of air pockets, Carrot seeds will not germinate. They have zero forgiveness. If they dry out, you get no carrots. So you want really, really good seed to soil contact with carrots. And what that means is when you plant the seed, it's co covered 100% with soil so that moisture stays in there as long as possible. And that's again, the number one reason why carrots don't yield well is because they don't germinate well. So seed to soil contact, this process is what's gonna guarantee you the best seed to soil contact every time. So the next step in the process starts way before you plant anything or do anything with the beds, and that's plan the timing of planting. With carrots, it's really important to get the timing right. These carrots were planted around the 4th of July in my climate. I know from experience that's the best time to plant our fall outdoor carrots. So they're huge by this time and big. So when we start to get actual cold, which we really haven't yet, we've barely had a frost, these will just get sweeter and sweeter and they're already getting really sweet. So they're big, they've pretty much done all their growing, they're ready to harvest. And that's because we've planned the timing right. Now with any kind of carrot growth, you just need to know that it's gonna be at least 70 days to get a really nice carrot. Even with the faster growing ones, we grow mochum for our summer carrots and spring carrots. Almost most of the carrots throughout the whole year are mochum. That's our number one. It's my favorite. It's the sweetest, it's the fastest carrot I've heard of. It's supposed to be about 45 to 55 days. In my climate, it still isn't really worth harvesting until about 70 days. And <clears throat> we just do it that way because we don't really wanna sell baby carrots, except at certain times of year in like June when it's really brand new and they're worth a lot of money. Sometimes we'll do that, but for the most part, you know, we're growing carrots for poundage, you know, yield. And so we want big carrots. And so for the most part, that means 70 days. Some of your heirloom fancier carrots might be more like 90 but that's 70 to 90 days in the growing season. So if you plant them in my climate, if you plant them too early, like in April, you're probably gonna have bad carrots, first of all, because it's too early in my climate to grow them, to, to get them germinated. You might have to wait 20 days to 25 days to get them to germinate, because it germinates so slow in the spring in the cold soil. And then when they start growing, they're gonna grow a lot slower. So it's not really a good idea to plant them early outside. Um, we do early in the greenhouse a lot and that helps, but it still takes about 90 to 100 days for us to get a real carrot. And that's all experience. I've done this for a couple years and I have the records to know when, you know, we actually get our yields. And so you need to know the timing. And so when you're planting for fall, you use a fall planting calendar. I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, and that will help you a lot. Johnny's has a really good uh, track record of knowing when crops 
are um, mature and it all depends on your average first frost. So Johnny's came up with that one, that's really good. And then planting the right day in the spring also matters a lot. So basically I wait till maybe a week before my average last frost, which for me is May 21st. So um, I think the first time we plant carrots, usually we just wait till about May 21st because it doesn't really make sense. You're not gonna get them any earlier by planting a week earlier. You're just gonna have better success because carrots take so long to germinate, you might as well wait until the soil's warm enough for them to grow. And so getting that timing right takes a lot of experience. Um, so you, you gotta get the timing right, soil right, and germination right, which I'm gonna talk about next. So once you have their timing figured out of when you wanna plant, when you wanna harvest, you wanna make sure that your seed is fresh. This is a big deal. I didn't take this too seriously until about two years ago and I noticed like every time we were getting perfect hair germination and I was doing everything pretty much the same as I was doing before, but the seed was three years old. So this year I made it a point to use fresh seed every planting. And fresh for me this year means this Mokum carrot was germinated 95% August 2023. So this was a good seed for this year. Next year, I probably will try this one time and then I'll move on to the 2024 germination because all seeds lose germination rate over time. It just is what it is. And when you're growing for yield, you might as well just buy fresh seed every year. I don't really find it to be a big advantage to buy bulk seed and store it for a really long time um, because the viability just still goes down if you store it. You know, if you have that, you know, nice seed vault like they have in Norway or wherever that is, then maybe, but I don't. I just have a fridge, so I store these in our cold room with a bunch of stuff to keep it dry and in a enclosed space and cool dry space, but it just doesn't make sense for me too much to store a boatload of seed for a long time. I have a lot of seed, you know, if uh, the apocalypse happens and we don't have seed, I'm gonna have some carrot seed for sure. But the results will be worse than perfect seed, you know, having fresh seed every time. So we use the Mokum carrot for almost all of our carrot plantings. Um, for, we use this Bolero carrot for storage, which is what I harvested earlier in the video. But um, Mokum is my personal favorite. It's just so delicious. Um, and you can get it really fast. If You can get a small carrot really fast with it. But um, I like using fresh seed. It might be controversial, but it just, it doesn't really save me any money to buy in bulk. And it, even in a garden, I don't think it saves you that much money. You know, just buy your seed fresh every year. Start to keep track of how much you use. Um, and, you know, it's pretty cheap to buy carrot seed. You could go to um, uh, True Leaf Market and you could get a quarter pound of carrot seed for like 10 bucks. That's a lot. That's more than I use in a year. So it's not that expensive to buy the seed. It's just you need to go through the ritual every year to get it fresh. And with carrot seed, it really matters. You know, certain things like tomatoes and stuff, maybe you don't need to buy fresh seed every year. But with carrots, since the germination is so critical, I go ahead and just buy fresh seed every year. So I know it works. And I do that with a lot of other root vegetables, um, stuff like plants we don't necessarily worry too much about. But anything where, if you're planting a large area with direct seeds in the ground, having fresh seed just increases your chances of having that entire area filled with food. So this is called the Jang JP1 Push Seeder. And this is how we plant all our carrots. So we can plant the whole bed in about five minutes or less. And all we gotta do is push this tool and it has a roller in here that drops the seed in the perfect density for us to get beautiful carrots that we don't have to thin at all. Now, I don't recommend you use this for a garden because it's pretty expensive. It's a little too fancy. It doesn't, you don't need this to grow truckloads of carrots, but you could buy this thing called the Earthway Seeder, which I'll put a link to in the description. And it's really si similar, but it's just a lower quality one that won't be as perfect as this. But for the amount that I'm planting, I need the top of the line. For you, you don't. And that one's like a hundred bucks. 
and you know over like one year you'll probably grow way more than a hundred dollars worth of carrots if you plant as much as i'm talking about easily so it makes it really easy to plant large areas really consistently fast because if you're going to just do them by hand it's going to take you a lot longer i've done that many times but it takes a lot of skill you got to know what you're doing because the seed density with hand seeding is it's a skill it's tricky you know you're going to have weird results and you're going to have to come back and thin them most likely i've planted with the earthway before and it doesn't really need to be thin that much if at all you know and what you want is really big honky carrots so using a push seeder i think is a real big game changer that not enough people are doing um, and if you grow in the ground like i teach in my garden course which is the link in the description you have a lot easier time using one of these as opposed to if you're in a raised bed you know a raised bed would be harder to use you could probably still do it uh but you know using the ground allows you to use these kinds of tools um, and you can plant a lot more than just carrots with those. You can plant beets, radishes, uh, all sorts of salad greens. And it just makes seeding a lot less painful. You know, if it's a chore for you to go out in your garden and sit there and plant 10 feet by hand, which will probably take an hour if you're not very good or fast, then you're must, a lot less likely to do it. And so if you have a tool, it makes it a lot faster, a lot more painless, you know. I look forward to direct seeding on the farm because it's like way easier than all the other stuff that we do to plant. Um, all I got to do is walk, you know, so that doesn't take any skill really. So using a push seeder like the, the Earthway, it's a great way to get huge amounts of carrots fast. And the last step is watering them in. And if you're doing a large area of carrots, which I recommend you do if you want to grow a significant amount for your family, uh, I would use a wobbler sprinkler head. This is another game changer um, that I don't see a lot of people talking about. Um, these were, this particular model was created by Neversink Farm Tools. You could buy this at the link in the description, this exact one, but you could also make your own. You could go to an irrigation store, they'll make them for you. You could buy these a lot of other places too, but this type of sprinkler waters perfectly evenly almost perfectly there are problems but it's 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 better than the impact sprinkler and when you're growing a large amount of carrots it's hard to do the other methods of germinating them like using a wood plank or um, blankets and stuff like that having this sprinkler makes it really easy all you have to do is water the ground every day for your germination period and that's another big topic so carrots take nine days to germinate in the summer when it's really hot in the spring, it's 14 to up to 20 days. So you gotta keep the ground moist for that time. Now in the spring, you don't really have to water it every single day, usually, if it's cold. Um, but in the summer, I, when I'm planting carrots, I water, like all these carrots here, we watered every day for a half an hour for nine days. And that got us these results, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, and I know they could be better, but the watering every day evenly, you have to have really good sprinklers for that to happen. Um, and it's a lot less work than setting out like wood planks. I could never do that method for the amount of carrots we're growing, you know. And if you want to grow a significant amount, you need to plant large square footage, you know. If you wanted to grow 50 pounds of carrots for your family, which is probably enough for the whole winter, you need about... Uh, 15 feet of one of these beds you know that's more than you could fit in most raised beds so you need a lot of space to grow a lot of carrots and i recommend you do that because it's one of the best you know food crops in the garden but you just have to plant a lot of space with them not just one little square foot hand seeded in a square foot garden or something because i see a lot of people talking about that so like if you want to grow a significant amount of carrots you need to plant a big area and the sprinkler is going to make it easier you can still use those other methods of germination, but um, it's just harder when you're growing a lot. So just this, this is as, as simple as just turning the sprinkler on every day for a half an hour, your entire footprint of where you planted the carrots and you will almost guaranteed get them to germinate because if they dry out, then you're, you're just done. 
you know, you're going to get half as many carrots basically. So you, you want to make sure you take care of that germination period. So nine to 14 days, depending on the time of year. So at this point, you should have perfectly germinated carrots. And all you got to do is wait. Then you got to harvest with the digging fork like I showed you at the beginning. And then you eat them whenever you want. And the beautiful thing about carrots is you can mostly harvest them when you want them. There's not like a time limit um, for the most part. So we have carrots in the ground in greenhouses. We'll be harvesting fresh till at least January, probably February, um, because they just can survive insane cold as long as you get them to grow right. So I always get excited when I see the perfect germination and because I know that at that point, all we got to do is wait and we're going to get a truckload of carrots. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. If you've had any successes with carrots in your climate, I'd love to know what people are doing to grow carrots because to me, it's one of the most important crops to grow in your garden because it is a huge abundance food source. You could grow more food in a small space with carrots that'll last you through the winter than a lot of other crops. So carrots are a big deal. So please leave a comment. And if you like this video, hit one of those thumbs on the spot below the video. And if you're serious about growing food in your backyard, the same way that I grow food on this farm, check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description below, where I go over how to set up a no dig version of this farm in your backyard in four easy steps. So check that out at the link in the description. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one.